So, uh, how many of you know what is ASAP? And how many don't know anything about ASAP? That's great. <laughs> so, uh, like I'm working in the ERP scan company, uh, which specialized on ASAP security, and we do a lot of research in this area. We also have a the product for analyzing this SAP security from different areas. And we speak a lot at the different conferences, like uh, just three days ago, we came from the internal SAP security summit. It was a very interesting um, topic. And yeah, we have most of the 160 acknowledgements from the SAP for the fun in different vulnerabilities in their products. Uh, so today I'll be speaking about uh, the SAP portal is like the application which is usually can be accessed from the internet. So that's why it's a portal. And how to get access to this application through the vulnerabilities of the other services and also through the vulnerabilities of the, the portal itself. So again, if you, if you don't remember, the SAP is like a company which make the business software. It's like software where all the business critical data is stored, like financial, HR data, and etc. So if somebody will want to break your company, it's probably the best way to do it is to attack the SAP system. And a little bit of our, our research that we've done, it's like we make a scan of the all the internet using the Nmap and using the uh, different services like Google searching and the showdown. So we analyze how many uh, of SAP services are exposed to the internet. Because many people think that SAP can be available only inside the company. But actually now nowadays it, it's not true. So it's like 5,000 different services, uh, management services uh, can, be f can be found uh, in the internet in the different, in different locations. So if you interested more, you can download this uh, from erpscan.com, the SAP security and figures. It's a global survey of uh, different things. So, yeah, and of course every slide now must contain um, some kind of short and search. It's like, it's like a trend. So, uh, here's like results how many uh, SAP portals we found in Switzerland by the Google and by search engine, but I suppose there are more than uh, this number. And what is the special about the SAP portal is like the gate to the internal network because the, the portal is usually connected with the uh, different internal systems and even with, with uh, SCADA and MES systems. And <coughs> yeah, it's like when you, and uh, usually the portal is c can be access through the internet, so if you break the SAP portal, you can go through the links uh, to the internal systems, and sometimes the links are, uh, have the passwords in itself. Sometimes they use the single sign-on authentication. So it's just a very critical system. And this is how it looks like, so it's not so easy. And But the main things are, so the user connects to the J2 engine through the browser. So there is a J2 web application server. It's something like uh, Apache Tomcat, but 100 times complex. And, and also the portal connects to the different uh, services in the uh, in internal network, like the SAP, the ERP systems, like databases, web applications. So it's kind of all the systems in inside the company. And it stores the users in a database or, the L or the in LDAP. And there are uh, things like iViews, the roles, and applications. So iViews is like the small parts, of the small components of the portal, like web pages or portlets. Uh, OK, so what can we do with all this stuff? How can we? Can we uh, Break to the ESAP portal. So the thing is that uh, this topic is was collected uh, during our different uh, engagements for the uh, 
SCP portal uh, hacking. And so uh, all the things are like from the real penetration test. So and first of all is the SCP management console. It's like the service to manage the, uh, the SCP server remotely. And yeah, so it have a like logs and traces and as uh, any a any of the systems. And the, the interesting thing that we found uh, the J station ID of the authentication in the logs, but it's it only uh, it only when the trace level is on, but we found it in production systems, so it means that uh, some people use it trace on the production systems. So the thing is, in J station ID is stored on the log files, but how can you get access to the log files? It's probably you need to have credentials or access to the system. But actually, it's wrong. So there is a remote interface you can send the SOAP request for read the log file. So you just send the SOAP request without authentication and read the, this kind of log file and get all the JSON IDs. Then you copy JSON ID into your cookie and connect to the SAP portal. It's very easy. So it was the first option, but it. Mostly it works inside the company because MMC services is n not very often uh, can be accessed through the, through the internet. Now the next thing is uh, a very known issue. It's a single sign-on issue. It's like uh, when, when you implement the single sign-on, uh, the user is like connecting uh, to the authentication proxy and send some kind of credentials. Uh, then the Active Directory or something like like that. Uh, check the authentication and send the the same uh, request, but it it all only adds the header to the HTTP like uh, like SSO header and the name of the user, like SSO header administrator. So and, and nothing else. So it means. Uh, that the attacker, uh, and that, uh, this header is known, so you just need to put the SSO header and the name of the user, like administrator. And the thing is, if the uh, enterprise portal uh, can be accessed directly, not, not through the authentication proxy, uh, so you can, can add this header to your HTTP request, and you, can be, and you will be authenticated like administrator just by adding the simple header. And yeah, so you know, the, you need to implement the, the firewall. So you, if you use a yes, single sign-on, you should the put the single sign-on first, then the firewall, and then the, uh, the SAP portal. OK, so next area is the uh, J2E server itself. And there, there are some critical issues. Uh, we also were speaking about those issues uh, before, but anyway, they are very useful for breaking the SAP portal. Uh, so the access is uh, to the J2E application is controlled with the WebXML and Web J2E GeneXML. So speaking about the WebXML, uh, there is a known vulnerability that we found and we were uh, presenting in the previous Black Hat. Uh, so the thing is, uh, when you have uh, some kind of um, critical uh, service, which is in the admin folder, and you have the restrictions listed here, uh, for example, for admin folder, only the get, uh, the get method is uh, can be sent by the admin administrator role. But the thing is, what happens if, if you send the head method? There is no head method in the restriction, so it means that everybody can send the head request. It's a very uh, stupid bug, but, uh, but it works. So, and the thing is, if you delete the get method, it, it means that uh, by default, all the methods are restricted. But if you list at least, uh, at least one method, it means that you, you, you care only about the get method. 
So you should. And the idea was to find some kind of uh, services. And there are about 500 services installed by default in the J2E engine. So the idea was to find at least some kind of service which, which can be exploited uh, by head request. And it mus must be some kind of interesting vulnerability because uh, head is only making something and don't get you the information. Uh, so it's a verb tampering vulnerability. And yeah, you need just send the head method. And we found the, the application called C uh, web service called CTC. It's like service for controlling uh, all the J2E engine. You can create user, you can assign user to role, you can manipulate the operation system comments, so kind of everything. And so it, everything will, can be done with a two head request, like first head request, create user, and second head request, assign him the administrator. Like two head requests to the internet portal service, and you're in it. Uh, yeah, so there are some security notes from the SAP, and you can usually prevent it. <coughs> and the second issue about the, the web XML, again, and OK, you listed all the methods, you do it well, but there is some. Uh, so if you call the admin critical action, uh, you, you cannot do this uh, without authentication because it's restricted. But there is a functionality with which is called invoker servlet to call any uh, servlet by the class name. So it means if you call the servlet using this request, uh, you can do this. Yeah, it means calls invoker servlet. So what what you can do is uh, again uh, attack the CTC even if it's the previous vulnerability is uh, is patched and yeah so our idea was to uh, to think what what can we do uh, additionally uh, so if we break SAP portal we have we want to to make uh, some kind of uh, attacks into internal uh, network and yeah so we were looking on the on this operation system uh, access so yeah you have easily uh, make operation system access with a special command like execute command with a cmd line so you can do pretty everything and in the, in windows it, the service is uh, running on the um, the SAP, SAP service which have the administrator rights. Uh, so yeah. So okay. So everything, this it will be like uh, how to break portal without breaking portal. <laughs> but let's talk about the portal itself. Uh, and what is the portal? It's like uh, the collection of the different uh, objects, uh, like uh, I views and users and roles and this kind of stuff. And it's like the big directory uh, called po Portal Content Directory. And all access to the, uh, the objects is based on ACL. And there are two types of access, like uh, design time is when you uh, have administrator access, and runtime is just for users. Uh, so it's like three three different permission levels and if you are seeing the user permission level for like administrator permissions we can he can do pretty e everything and there is also end user permissions is like if you have access to the iview or don't have access to the iview and um, yeah so the end user permissions is pretty easy so you can make disable it or enable it user have access or don't have access. And uh, yeah. And and also there is a the thing like uh the security zones, but I will talk about a little bit later. And yeah the administrator permissions you can make the all the kind of permissions like owner and full control and etc. And there are also uh, 
role assignment permissions, like if the user can assign different users' roles to this, those components. And yeah, it's, it's not too so easy to understand all, this, uh, all the things because it's just the beginning. Uh, and also, there the are right security zones. So, speaking easy is like if you have many iViews, uh, and you want to assign the different users' uh, roles to these iViews, you put them all into the security zone, like, like uh, you've put files on the folder. That's it. And yeah, the, the security zone is specified by the vendor ID, like security areas, like name of the zone is safe and safety level. So it's like uh, uh, who can get access to this zone. Yeah, it listed in the Portal Labs uh, XML application. And yeah, one one uh, eye view can be uh, assigned only to uh, one security zone. And so, if user want to ha have access to the eye view, the first of all, the end user permissions are checking. And if you add the security zone permissions, which uh, which is additional, it's not the default. Uh, so the first of all, the end user permissions are checking, and then the security zone permissions are checking. But it looks like a um, like secure. Uh, but the thing is, you can access to the uh, I views uh, directly bypassing the uh, role you end user role permissions. So it means that the only security zones will be checked, and Security zones it's, it's not, are not configured by, def uh, by default. And there are different safety levels in security zones. <laughs> so it's like who can get access to the different security zones. So the most interesting is the no safety and, and low safety. Because no safety is like everybody can get access uh, without any rights. It's low safety is like every user can get access. And medium is like the some kind of users and high safety is more restricted. So our, our idea was to, to find if there are really some kind of uh, uh, iViews that are assigned to no safety and low safety. And yes, so we found during the many tests li like uh, it, 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 it really exists in, uh, in a corporate in a, in a corporate installation. So there are uh, no safety applications, and in some of that applications, uh, they they can be like critical ones, and they also can uh, have the vulnerabilities. So in some of the applications, we uh, can find this simple cross-site scripting and etc. So yes, it's it really works, and it's 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 not so easy to understand and configure properly. That's why it's sometimes. Uh, can be issues. So yeah, the, the thing is you need to check the security zone permissions. Uh, okay, so what kind of... Sorry. What kind of other things we can find in the SAP portal? Actually, pretty everything, like in every other application. So shame on me, it's too... 2012, and we're still talking about the cross-site scripting. But here is like a uh, okay. We have a cross-site scripting. We can get the cookie, but w sometimes it's HTTP only. But uh, the thing, r interesting thing is like uh, the portal have a special uh, API which called APCF, and it's like JavaScript API for uh, for uh, for calling. Uh, First of all, for uh, for calling different objects, and the second is to transfer the data between the different I views, uh, data and the and the different objects between the I views. Uh, so you can do like the cross I view scripting and some kind of like this uh, because there are different objects uh, for the different I views. And they can store the critical data. So by the cross-site scripting, uh, you can uh, 
download those objects, EPCF objects. So that's more interesting than the simple cross-site scripting. And the second thing is uh, the portal have the knowledge management documents. It's like the folder of the documents, the simple documents with like uh, doc files, Excel files, and txt files. And many, many uh, administrators uh, don't disable the default functionality. So it means, first of all, you can read uh, most of the documents which are on the public uh, uh, folders. And the second of all, you can create your own documents. And you can create the HTML page and insert the XSS in the HTML page. It's not an XSS, it's like you can insert the JavaScript in, in the HTML page and you can create any kind of page like a phishing page and uh, send this to the user. And yeah, it's pretty simple, but it, it works. <laughs> and the second thing is, uh, like we found the directory traversal in uh, the SAP portal, so you can read any kind of files. And it works like this, but we send this information to the SAP, it was closed, but and, and we we came again to the same company to make the, the next assessment, so we have the quarter based assessments, and we checked this uh, uh, directory traversal and w it was still working, and we asked, did you install the patch? They said yes, so we were surprised. And the thing was that uh, it was not properly patched, so they just deleted the, uh, denied the dot dot slash things. So you can uh, easily uh, call the direct uh, like file, the like etc password, so you can uh, call the files from the root directory, directory with without making the dot dot slash. But this one already patched. But you know, that's <laughs> not many people are installing. Okay, so let's talk about something interesting, more relevant to the SAP portal. And uh, yeah, we, we, we found the, the file which is storing the, the user and the password for, the, for access to the J2E engine. And we found another file which stored the key and we know the algorithm is this, so the thing was to get access to this file. And, okay, how could we read the file directory traversal we, we already used? Uh, the OS command execute web tampering, so we already used. What we can do is to the XML external entity. And, but it's, it's not so very common external entity. So, look, like, look at this. It's like a, a response from the SAP portal, it's like typical response when you, for example, click on the portal menu, you get this stuff. What the hell is that? When we, when we firstly found this, so it was like 100 uh, parameters in the request. And so totally crazy, so we were looking at that and we can't understand anything. So it's like, a, this is the, this APCF API, so then how it works. So it's like to uh, to go to the next page, you need to send the 100 parameters and with different crazy stuff. And while we were analyzing this, we found the interesting thing like XML version. So one of those 100 parameters is exactly the XML file. <laughs> it's like XML in the parameter. And we saw uh, different parameters they, that uh, contain some kind of uh, Java classes. So it's like the crazy way of things. So uh, yeah, uh, we were successfully uh, exploited this XML with using the uh, XXE vulnerability. But the, the problem was that uh, it is like error-based XXE, so uh, you see like we can't restore the text ID with blah, 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 and here's the uh, source of the, of the file. Uh, okay, so now we can uh, read any kind of files. 
and the passports uh, here are the passports stored in this file and this uh, so this is the co configuration sorry this configuration file uh, this is security file and this is the key file so in security file looks like this uh, we have a some kind of uh, password uh, which is encrypted and we have the the access, access to the key so we can easily decrypt this using the the algorithm which is this and the key and the password and then we can get access to the uh, J2E login and password and get access to the whole SCP portal. And okay, so what about the post exploitation? What we, you can do then? Um, how many of you know what's a server side request forgery? Oh, really? That's cool. Okay, uh, so it's like the kind of attack which we were presenting in the previous Black Hat. So let's suppose we, you, you have the portal service, which can be accessed uh, for everybody. Then you have a firewall, and then you have some kind of ERP system or anything other. And you cannot access to this uh, system because it's under the firewall. But the portal can get access to this system because they need to somehow interact with each other. So the, the ser service side request forgery is like, the idea of this is to find some kind of service. Let's look here. So you need to find some kind of service here which will transmit your request to this service. And maybe not all requests, maybe just part of request. And maybe with some modifications, but the idea is like this. And yeah, the the harder thing is to <laughs> to find this service. And so details can be found in the, our Black Hat talk, but speaking firstly, uh, you can use the XXE vulnerability, uh, where we in the XML external entity you can call the HTTP, uh, you can make the HTTP request to the uh, other services, like to internal network. Uh, but what we found, uh, there is a Gopher scheme. This pretty old uh, protocol and yes so using this protocol you can send any uh, application level request so you construct uh, so everything you put uh, after this slash it's, it's like the it's application you can construct the application level packet uh, because if you if you make the HTTP request, it's like it's it's automatically make the get uh, and then uh, uh, the string that you 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 do. But if you th use a gopher, so all the you like to put AAA and it, it sends the application level packet with AAA. So you can transmit uh, every uh, exploit through the gopher protocol. So and, and any application level. So you can exploit the different operation system vulnerabilities, the ACP vulnerabilities, and uh, yeah, you can even bypass different SCP restrictions. And what's more interesting, you can uh, exploit the local host vulnerabilities. So if you have the service on the local host, which, is, which can be accessed uh, remotely, you, you can send the XML packet with uh, the Gopher uh, call to the internal IP, to the local host IP address and local host port. And usually the local host services are not so secured like uh, remote services. Um, yeah, and the next post exploitation is very funny. So there is a knowledge management that there is a functionality to search in this knowledge management. And if you put some kind of password in this search, you can find a lot of interesting information in the documents containing the password, etc. Because you know the, the the portal is like the, the the key for all your infrastructure. So everybody is it's it's for the for storing documents. So everybody is storing all the documents in SAP portal. 
So it means that you can find any kind of interesting thing, like uh, you, you can search for the confidential document like, like this. And yeah, if you find some kind of passports, you can uh, uh, use the, the SSRF with the goofer to connect to the, some kind of internal services. So you don't even need to uh, get access to the operation system of the portal, install some kind of shell, and uh, make a next step. You can do every kind of malicious activity through the portal without installing anything on it. So it's very still see uh, attack. Uh, so it's kind of unfinished, uh, probably faster than it should be, but so yes, there's there's possible. Uh, it's possible to secure the SAP system, uh, and SAP is working on this area, and we're helping them. Uh, but but nowadays it's like the more on the customer side. So like customers should implement the patches, because what we see is like SAP becoming more and more secure. But uh, in the corporate implementations, we still see the systems like were installed five years ago and with this stupid vulnerabilities. And the one more thing, like everybody was asking the one question, uh, how many real attacks on FCP system do you see? This was the main question of everybody because yeah, we can speak about this uh, a lot, but uh, what is the real threat? And the thing is, uh, Three days ago, there was an, uh, there was news like the anonymous, uh, like the Greg Finalcy. So, yeah, I d usually I don't put this kind of slides on my presentation like many people do, but it's like the first uh, attack using the zero day in, S uh, in SAP system. So the anonymous say that they have the zero day for SAP, and they use it for they exploited the Greek finance ma ministry. And they exposed a lot of critical data using passwords and the documents. So this is the example of the, the first real attack on the SAP system. So I don't know. And, and the thing is, they have this exploit, so they can use it on the other systems. And yes, now the answer is there are threats. And yeah, if you're interested in uh, more presentation about the SAP uh, system vulnerabilities and also other things, uh, we will be speaking in those presentations. And we also organize a conference which called Zero Nice, which will be in Russia in November. It's a pretty interesting conference with a lot of good uh, people in the hardcore stuff. And yeah, thank everybody. If you have any questions, I will. I'll throw them.